Welcome to pre-math. In this video tutorial, we are going to evaluate this given integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 over 3, plus 2 sine of x times d of x by using the contour integral. Let's go ahead and get started with the solution. In order to evaluate this given integral, we will perform multi-steps that would include Cauchy residue theorem as well as L'Hopital's rule. And here's our very first step. Let's go ahead and write this, our trick function sine of x as a complex exponential form. And this is what we are going to write. Sine of x could be written as in terms of complex form as e power i x minus e power negative i x divided by 2 i. And on this side, let's do some additional substitution as well. And here, as you can see, we have these exponents, e power i x and e power negative i x. We want to make it a little bit simple. We can write this one as we're going to say let, I'm going to say z equal to e power i x. Just that's going to make our job a lot simpler and then z power negative 1 is going to become simply e power negative i x. Now let's take the derivative of this one z equal to i e power i x both sides so that's going to give us dz equal to i time e power i x times dx. We know that e power i x is simply equal to z. Let me go ahead and write down. So that is going to give us dz equal to i times z times dx. So if we isolate dx, I can write dx equal to dz divided by i z. And now let's revert back to our this sine of x on this side equation equal to e power i x. I am going to replace it by z. I can write as a z minus and this e power negative i x. I'm going to replace it by z power negative 1 divided by 2 i. And here I can write this equation as 1 over 2i times this becomes z minus and z inverse could be written as 1 over z. And now this could in turn be written as 1 over 2i and here we can write this one when we do the cross multiplication we can write as z square minus 1 divided by z. So therefore we can write sine of x equal to z square minus 1 on the top divided by 2iz. And here's our next step. Let's focus on our original integral which is this one and here I have just copied it down over here and just keep in your mind that this integral is a real integral that goes from 0 to 2 pi. That means it just simply completes one revolution from going from 0 to 2 pi. And since the real integral equals to the contour integral, so therefore this real integral could be written as in terms of contour integral. I'm going to just put a contour C and then 1 divided by 3 plus 2. And here sine of x, I am going to replace it by this blah, 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 whatever we found out. So I'm going to write down z square minus 1 
divided by 2iz, all right? And then dx, we figured out dx equal to dz over iz. I can replace that one, dz divided by iz. And here, just keep in your mind that this, our contour is just simply a unit circle that completes a one loop. Let's go ahead and simplify this integral. We can see that this two and this two is gone. So this integral could be written as once again, this integral and then one divided by three plus z square minus one divided by i z and then times d z over i z and here's our next step let's focus on this on the denominator i have just simply copy it down over here and after cross multiplication we got this one as a simplified answer so therefore i can write this contour integral as one divided by this whatever simplified form i can write z square plus 3i z minus 1 divided by i z times d z over i z and as we can see that this i z and this i z they are gone so thus we can simplify it as we can write this contour integral of 1 over z square plus 3i z minus 1 times dz. So therefore I can write this real integral equal to this contour integral in a simplified form and I'm going to call this as an equation number 1. And now here is our next step. We will be using the residual theorem to evaluate this integral. And here we can see we have a quadratic in the denominator, as you can see in this equation. So that means we're going to have a two poles. And now we will find those two poles by setting this quadratic in the denominator equal to zero. And here I have just copied down this denominator, quadratic denominator, right up here. And now I am going to set this one equal to zero. Now this has become a quadratic equation and we are going to solve this one by using the quadratic formula that you can see over here. And here's our quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. So z equal to, in our case, b is 3i, so that's going to become negative 3i plus r minus. So this b square is going to become 3i square minus 4 times a is 1, c is negative 1, all over divided by 2 times 1. Let's simplify furthermore. So that is going to become negative 3i plus r minus. So this thing is going to become simply 3i square. i square, by the way, is negative 1. So that is going to become negative 9 plus 4 divided by 2. And once again, keep in your mind that i square equal to negative 1. And now we have s simplified it a little bit more. Now let's focus on this part, square root of negative 5. And we know the square root of negative 1 is i. So that part is going to become i times square root of 5. So therefore, z becomes equal to negative 3i plus or minus i times square root of 5 divided by 2. So we can simplify this one. Furthermore, I can write z equal to, here I can factor out this i, so that is going to become negative 
3 plus r minus square root of 5 times i divided by 2. Now let's go ahead and split this one along these positive and negative signs. So we're going to have a two solution. The first one is going to be z equal to negative 3 plus square root of 5 divided by 2 and then times i outside and the other one is going to be z equal to negative 3 minus square root of 5 times i divided by 2. Now let's focus on our this pole as we can see that our contour is a unit circle and this pole lies outside that contour so therefore we are going to reject this one. Now let's focus on this another pole this one and we can see that this obviously this pole lies within the contour so we are going to accept this one so I'm going to call this pole as Z naught and now in this next step we are going to apply this residual theorem so our this contour integral this one I can write this one as uh, let me go ahead and just copy it down contour integral c of 1 over z square plus 3i z minus 1 times dz could be written as equal to 2 pi i and then the residual res as z equal to z naught of this function we got this one 1 over z square plus 3i z minus 1 and this could also be written as 2 pi I limit as z approaches z naught of this thing that is going to become z minus z naught times this whole function 1 over z square plus 3i z minus 1. And now we can further simplify this thing z minus z naught time this is going to be this one. Now if we apply this limit z equal to z naught over here. So z naught minus z naught is going to give us 0 on the numerator. And we know that the z naught is the solution to this quadratic. So that means that's also going to give us 0. So 0 divided by 0 is undefined. So in this scenario we are going to use the L'Hopital's rule and according to the L'Hopital we're going to take the derivative on the top on the numerator and the derivative at the denominator at the same time. If we take the uh, derivative on the numerator that is just going to give us 1 and the derivative at the denominator is going to give us simply 2z plus 3i and here's our simplified equation on the top this is 1 as you can see at the denominator it is 2z plus 3i so thus our contour integral turns out to be this much and here's our next step let's go ahead and apply the limit so wherever we see z I am going to replace it by this quantity so we can write this one as 2 pi i 1 over 2 times this whole thing whatever this thing is negative 3 plus square root of 5 i divided by 2 and then plus 3 i and here we can see this 2 and 2 is gone so we can write this one 2 pi i 1 divided by 
here if I distribute this i, so that is going to become negative 3i plus i times square root of 5 and then plus 3i and this 3i and negative 3i they are gone so we ended up with simply 2 pi i on the top divided by i times square root of 5 and we can see that this i and i is gone so this could be written as 2 pi divided by square root of 5 and now we can easily rationalize this thing by multiplying and dividing by square root of 5 so this could be simply written as 2 square root of 5 times pi divided by 5 so that's the value of our given integral turns out to be a 2 times square root of 5 times pi divided by 5 and that's our final answer thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos bye